And we are back. We are experience level 15 on our demigod transmuter. We have cleared lair, dipped our toes into the snake pit and swamp. Nearly cleared, we have only the ultimate level of each of those branches, putting us very close to one, two, or zero runes in the horrible death. We have some pretty big dead ends on the dungeon. We have uh, a vault entrance that had Donald and Luis. Uh, and may I remind you that Luis can banish you to the abyss. Not something we want to encounter. So we're not left with very many options. We've cleared the Orcish Mines, kind of. St. Roca is wandering around, and previously St. Roca would have murdered us. We could go down to the Elven Halls, but we're really lacking in some of our resistances that we need. Notably, resist electric, but we're in a better place. Um, we just have to be careful because you can get banished there as well. So, one of the things that we found on our journey midway through the lair is this potato shaped kind of. If you took a potato and you showed it what a cartoon heart looked like, and it grew trying to be a cartoon heart, except it was still just a potato, that's kind of the shape of this vault. And uh, it's stone walls, so we can't dig through, and there are some walls that are transparent. Uh, we have several moths of wrath which themselves are not scary, but what they do is they send basically everybody around them into a berserk rage. So if, if, if we go down, we can probably kill it. So we're going to read our teleport scroll, and we're just going to go down there and see what happens. And if something bad happens, at least we've already queued up being able to leave. So. Irradiate? Yes, we're going to irradiate near our ice beast. I don't give a fuck. We killed a cane toad and a moth of wrath. So that's a plus. And the reason we're in this vault is because there's an, there's an artifact. An artifact ring, in fact, which may give us the resist electric we so require. Could haste ourselves. I actually, I don't think it's necessary. I just don't. Let's condense your vein. Yeah, freaking flame clouds everywhere. So we're gonna attack the Komodo dragon here because uh, they can do a lot of damage, and also they're berserk. Now they're berserk, I say. So let's get the yak. And then we can focus on the player ghost, who's an ogre transmuter. Sorry, Ruiquivi. And we basically just cleared ourselves that vault. Thank you, Condenser Vein. Oh man, what is this ring? We picked up Joe's Gravitas. Teleport other and dispersal. Probably won't use it, but nice spells. And I'd say that's a win. The Ring Uturgi. Two pips of resist negativity. Nine mana points. You lose four strength though. Losing the four strength kind of sucks considering that's your unarmed damage. Um, I find it really interesting though because the other resist negativity ring we have also is a double combo with a Ring of Magical Power. So if we were to wear these two rings, we would have a crap time of resist negativity. And we would have a lot more mana to spend on them, so more than 50%. So it wasn't the resist elect that we were hoping for. I actually think I actually think elf and going into the elven halls is probably not a bad idea. But maybe we find some resist electric in Swamp? I don't know, some of the bosses and stuff on these branch ends are really annoying. Yeah, at least doing one level of elf. But it's... I think I'm being overly cautious. 
We haven't even been to Swamp Four. We don't know that it's super dangerous. Um, we just have to be careful because getting the rune on Swamp Four doesn't actually do anything for us as a character. Like, at all. Like, there's, there's no reason to get the rune right now. The only reason, only reason it would matter is if we were going to go into the vault, and that's the same dungeon level that we can get banished or mauled by Rupert's Executioner's Axe. So, let's check out Swamp Pool. It doesn't really seem like there's a difference in these staircases. Maybe one of them better allows for escape. So we'll go down that one. Tiny bleach and two swamp worms. That's pretty benign. Okay, what about this other one? Uh, Elianoma, Goliath Frog, and a Will of the Wisp. That one's far more dangerous. We could probably drag the Elianoma over to us, but let's not do that. Okay, so our, this Swamp Worm just yanked us into a pack. There's four other Swamp Worms, a Tyrant Leech, and a Bunyip. The Bunyip, do we even know what kind of a creature it is? a flesh-eating beast that uses its limbs and tail interchangeably. Okay, so I guess it's kind of like a seal, except it can like jump off of its tail and stuff. Anyhow, the reason why they're so bad is because they attack three times for 40 damage each. So we're going to try and get away... worked out all right for man of viper dies we need to irradiate what it looks like we're okay the goliath frog does do corrosive damage They're like a nasty amphibious beast and they also attack from afar so we need to stay in demigod form um, because we have resist corrosion uh, on our shield. So what I'm doing isn't super smart, in all honesty, but I did it. Hmm. This is when it would be nice to have Azakobo's armor. I'm instead going to do wear blood since everything knows we're here, and that gives us at least one slay. The Bunyip Man... Man, they do so much damage. All right, let's swap with Ice Beast. I really don't want to lose this staircase. Whoa, way to go, Ice Beast. Seriously? Whoa, Will of the Wisp. Check those fucking things that's shooting at us. That's a hard bail. Man, that Bunyip was almost dead, too. Well, if it was almost dead the first time, I'm sure we can kill it again. I'm gonna go down this travel. I'm gonna switch the exclusions. All right.
So this staircase now has two bunyips at it. I think this other one's probably safe now. Yeah, we do have that will of the wisp. So we'll just wait a few turns, go back down, bring it back up. That's how we do it. We did not account for them blinking away, but we can kill them in ice form easily enough. Hmm, hmm. Thinking about play style. Where are we gonna go? Yara's is just a good utility spell. So, we should stick with that. We're about to be done with conjurations and hexes. We'll get more transmutations, and then that'll put us at equal footing to be able to get monstrous menagerie or dragon form. Hmm. Our unarmed combat is a little low. Our dodging is probably about where it needs to be. Fighting's okay. All right. So we're good on the experience that we're earning. Strider Witch, we have not seen one of those, and they are a relatively new enemy to the swamp. Ancient swamp ways. That's what these witches follow. And they have a pair of stilt-like chicken legs. Ooh, that really makes me want to play a Tengu. I need to be careful. I need to say I really want to play a demigod transmuter. <laughs> These are pretty bad. Hit twice for 25 damage, and they can paralyze you and cast agony. So, let's see if we can run away. They only have 66 hit points, so we should be able to kill them in like two irradiates. But, you know, characters like that don't always stand right next to you the way you hope they would. Damn, what, what are we doing meleeing this bunyip? Or that's just dumb. It's so dumb. So now we now we have to do something. Can we charm it? No. Are they slow? No, it's fast. But they attack extremely slowly. That's what the problem is. I guess we could fear them. We should have been irradiating, but we... Well, we have the Ice Beast. That's why we didn't get a Radiate to begin with. I'm, I really don't like the idea of overusing. We can probably use a Telescroll. We'll probably be okay. Oh, man. All right, we're one tile away. They're stuck hitting our Ice Beast. Damn. Ice Beast, you better not lure that pony up over here. Okay, so Swamp 4 is a little scarier than we would like. Mm. 
If we had dragon form, we'd be able to kill it. <laughs> if we had dragon form. And see, now this makes me wish that I didn't put these points into conjurations and hexes and summonings. We can get dragon form. It'll take a little while. We can get it. Because we need to real, we need to be able to reliably kill enemies, and we've been sacrificing our unarmed combat. And it's not that behind. So I know there's bunyips over here on Swamp Four, but. In fact, let's notate swamp three. Thorn Hunter. That's one that we probably want our uh, our shield out for. Okay, well I was gonna run away, but I think we'll just do this. So we did a triple irradiate on the bunyip, and then summoned some shit, and now we're running away. <laughs> oh, well, it, it worked. It worked. That gives us a little confidence. Also some confidence that we didn't just do the absolute stupidest stuff with our experience in this game. Hey, this time... The bunyip died in three radiates. All right, making progress on Swamp Four. Not sure what we're gonna do on this Fenced Rider Witch, but I guess we'll figure it out. One on one with the Spriggan Rider. Nice.
Man, where'd this witch go? I thought it was too good to be true that they'd be asleep still. I also learned the hard way that these shadows, when they go invisible, they do more damage. The game description says it can hit for up to 14 damage to deal increased damage when unseen. Well, it's at least triple. I had one hit me for 39 damage. <laughs> I didn't think I was in one-shot territory. I probably would have died anyway on that character. It was my fault. And then we have probably one of the most annoying, more difficult enemies that could have spawned on Swamp 4. If we don't have to fight Mara, let's not fight Mara. And... Kinda looks like we're fighting Mara. Mara luckily blinked away. At least they're nowhere near the staircase. All right, well that puts us at another point. Where are we gonna go? Are we gonna try and do the last part of Snake? We don't have any specific exclusions there. Server-wide announcement. There's probably no way to chat to them. So we'll go for another 15 minutes, and then the server's gonna have some maintenance. I don't know uh, who exactly this person is that's making the server announcement. I wonder if it's uh, Rax. I chatted with Rax before, the owner of the domain, and. Who runs this? Yeah, Rex inspired me to want to cook certain dishes, actually. Anyhow, I guess I guess we're gonna go to the snake pits. Asterion. Do we have Yara's yet? We don't have the spell levels. But otherwise we could we could cast it. Alright, well I guess that means we go to Elf.
Well, we do actually have resist electric if we go with shield. <laughs> if we go with the shield of the gong, it gives us the willpower too. But we lose five evasion. It means our evasion would be like 17. Probably 16 to 18. It also makes noise every time you block an attack. <laughs> yeah. Gong! Imagine that fighting with a huge magical gong that didn't deform. And so it still just made this huge gong <laughs> all around the dungeon. If it wouldn't take all of our gold, I'd, I'd consider it. We have, we have the five slay on our shield right now. I'm gonna pause for just a moment before we go into the Elven Halls. So let's just take a peek down the elven halls before it is restart time. Alright, cool. So we got a basic entrance. We got pyromancers who can do a lot of damage, and who uh, can summon fire elementals, and who can absorb things. We've also got a Zephyrmancer, and we're stuck in a hallway, which is not ideal. But you know, sometimes this is just how it works. This is Crawl, and we don't have a shield of the gong. We won't need it, because they already know we're here. By a lot. We'll shut the door just to give us a little more time. Oh man, what are we gonna do now that we're surrounded? Oh yeah, use a radiate. Okay, so. Let's refresh ourselves. Why exactly are we here? 
we're here to get some experience to put to use so that we can kill things like Mara and Asterion. Um, Irradiate will do that for us. We don't even need super high spell power for that. We would like to memorize Yara's Violent Unraveling, which we're basically already done with. We just need to get our spell casting up. We would like to get Dragon Form, and we would like to get Monstrous Menagerie, which is now 38%. So, I think the dragon form probably will help us more. So that's basically it. We're also, we're also getting some evocation, although it is still pretty cheap. All right, we'll leave it on. but not as high as that. The Mana Viper, I got this when we first memorized this spell. One of the things I thought of was how useful it would be <laughs> against elves. They do all know abjuration, so, you know, don't get too excited about how good they're going to be. Zephyrancer with a rapier of electrocution. We have an invisible knight. right this moment, so there's no reason to rush in. Yeah, if nothing else, the summons are really useful for intercepting enemies. No reason to be scared that the heal wounds is grayed out, it's because we're wearing the rope of vines. But if we if we're in one of our forms, we can still cloth potions. Alright, let's 
do some repositioning. We really shouldn't be backed into a corner like that. That's kind of scary to have such a low HP and then be running away and just see these arrows coming from the distance and killing your summons. These animated weapons do a lot of damage. They're extremely dangerous and their armor is extremely high. Very difficult to fight as a transmitter until you get something like Dragon Form. Not to keep pounding Dragon Form, but that's what it's like. And that's one of just the dangers of Elf that we accept, is that we're going to have to fight those animated weapons that are really tough. This default knight's probably gonna... yeah. So if we're smart and careful, we should be able to position ourselves so that we don't get hit very much. Looks like it worked. Elf Sorcerer. Sometimes they have banishment, like like now. They can banish our ass. We are definitely, definitely, definitely don't want that. They're hasted too. Bolt of Acid. Our Ice Beast got banished. I think we can take it, just maybe not when it's hasted. And this is surprisingly effective. All right, that's the server uh, reboot for maintenance. the stream and we will be back later today so thanks for watching so far hopefully we're gonna be able to get a rune here soon 
right. Peace, peace to you all. Greetings and salutations, and welcome back to the stream. We are a level 16 demigod transmuter. We last were fighting in the Elven Halls. We, uh, we were in a long hallway with a deep elf sorcerer trying to wreck us. We've got a decent amount of willpower, uh, and we've basically just been sending summons their way. And the Mana Viper is holding their own surprisingly well. So that worked out exceedingly favorably. And uh, we're gonna rest up, get out of the open halls, and we're gonna contemplate wh what exactly our plan is right now. So we spent uh, early experience getting spider form, then ice form, and then we picked up ice and summoning to get summon ice beast. And then we picked up some hexes to get some mana viper. And then we picked up some conjuration to get irradiate. Meanwhile, we've mostly been training unarmed combat this entire time. Fighting, we've been, we were heavy in the beginning and we kind of tapered off. We recently got a condenser vein, so we're putting some into evocation. Not enough to get an acid cloud but still enough, hopefully, to get fire clouds. And then we're getting our spellcasting and transmutation up. We want the spellcasting up because, and we just got what we needed, we wanted to be able to get Yara's Violent Unraveling. So we just became able to memorize that, and now we have no spell levels left. And that's okay, because the, probably the next thing we're going to get is Dragon Form. We will need seven spell levels, however, that's a little bit away. So we're going to unfocus spellcasting. And it's almost a shame to not train fighting. Like, fighting does help with damage. And because fighting is like literally less than half the experience of unarmed combat, let's at least get that up a little bit more. We'll get that up to 14. Uh, so our skill plan is looking okay. Um, and what I mean by that is just making sure that we have what we need to be able to survive the threats that are presented to us and that we can reliably and overwhelmingly defeat our normal opponents. So as we're getting an increased complexity in opponents, we really need more tools. So that's why we got Irradiate, that's why we got Summon Mana Viper, and that's why we got Yara's Violent Unraveling. So now that we've kind of got these situational pieces, we really need to put a bunch of experience to our core way of surviving. So if we weren't a transmuter right now, if we weren't a spellcaster, we weren't getting summonings, I'd say we need a lot more dodging. And then we'd get, we'd maybe even pick up some armor, although our strength is really low. Anyhow. Uh, and then we're gonna take Elf down about as far as we feel comfortable with. Um, we're definitely not going to clear it, unless we get exceptionally lucky. We're not going to clear it, um, but we'll probably get Elf 1 and Elf 2, maybe a little more. And then after that, hopefully that will uh, get us closer to being able to get a win. But we have some big bad enemies that we need to be able to handle. Asterion can banish us, I believe. Um, no, it was Luis that could that could banish us. But anyhow, Asterion will summon demons, so we needed Yara's for that. 
So, we could go back to Snake. But I think we're gonna, we're gonna do, we're gonna go to Elf. And we'll just have to make sure to be careful about these dancing weapons. Because they have very, very high armor class and we don't have a good way of surpassing that. But that's all why we're getting dragon form, baby. Our main, our main attack is going to be with the shield for the time being. Maybe the whole game. And we'll only pull dragon form out when we need it. But you know, that's, that's how it works. Alright, so we're about to start fighting. So one of the things we're having to look out for are these Deep Elf Zephyrmancers. We have no resist electric. That's part of the reason why we're keeping the Slay Shield on. Damage and also um, in Demigod form we have better evasion than Ice form. And if we go with Spider then we lose our shield. Orange Crystal Statue. So, Orange Crystal Statue has a lot of armor. A little more HP than an elf, 70. They'll cast Shadow Creatures. Draining Gaze, Brain Feed, and Mass Confusion. Mass Confusion is currently 1 in 6 to affect us. So we're not really excited about going in there, considering we can't even like ambush them around a corner. Let's go ahead and get our Mana Viper. Or blink to somewhere far away. Ha! You blink, I'll close the door. Good luck with that, buddy. Oh, they went around. Interesting. Well, we'll just charge them. Alright, we already got our potions from uh, the Assorted Antiques. Nothing really there for us. Unless we eventually find a, uh, a nice shield and we want to... Sorry, a nice non-artifact shield. Vampiric Trident. Hmm. Three de Deep Elf Zephyrmancers. Condenser Vein time. If we ran away and they chased us, and they were shooting those bolts at us, and then the Archer was shooting, 
it would have been super bad. Now the thing about clouds is that it, they didn't always used to be this way, but clouds that you cast as a player, you can only sustain as long as you can see them. So you can't do something like use your condenser vein and then immediately run away. Um, you'd think that would be the great strategy, but then the clouds go away. So that's not good. There's really not anything super scary. We're probably not going to hit the Deep Elf Archer with poison. Like, nearly certainly. But we kind of want to keep those freezing clouds in play for as long as we could until the Zephyrmancers were dead. Our Mana Viper successfully uh, disrupted the magic of the Deep Elf Zephyrmancer. We can go around the corner and encounter nearly complete. We do have the Deep Elf Knight. They'll haste themselves, and so we'll just use Yara's if that's what it comes to. But their magic got disrupted. So, way to go, Mana Viper. Solo kill. You might not think the summon Mana Viper is that beefy, but look at that. It can bite for up to 23 damage. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Also has high evasion, so it's good against like the knights. Uh, and I believe the damage does scale with spell power, but that's not a huge concern to us because we're not gonna. We're gonna get dragon form before we get monstrous menagerie, so it's gonna be a while until we get something. be pretty scary. Um, commonly, there will be weapons that have Distortion brand, so you gotta watch out for that. This is getting a little hairy. Let's go ahead and get Beastly Appendage. This is pretty hairy though, so we we'll want to make sure to conserve our mana. We, we need 20 mana for sure just to be able to spam or radiate. Where blood might help us. Yeah, let's go ahead and cast where blood. Because we're gonna get the killing blow on that and that. Mm-hmm. I guess we'll kill the knight. working out surprisingly well. I thought this was going to go differently. Alright, we're going to have to charge the archer. Alright, cool. And Wereblood did do us a little favor there. Kept her health a little higher. So a lot of this is about patience. And making sure that as often as possible, you're setting up your fights so that you have an overwhelming advantage. Like, if as a character you have the ability to change the, the encounter to your advantage, than you should. Like, it's kind of like if if you know that you're gonna have to be in a fist fight with someone, and you know that if you just spend <laughs> like a minute trying to run away, then they'll either leave you alone or they'll get so tired that you know you'll win. Like, it's you, you got to spend that effort to set the encounter in your favor. That was a really bad analogy. I'm sure, I'm sure your imagination can think of something better. And then, 
How pleased will you be with yourself when your imagination has come up with something good? Better than mine, at least. One shot. That's a great sign that we're one-shotting things. I'm curious, this deep elf archer could open the door. I don't know that they will. Oh shit, we should not have opened the door. This is Mana Viper. Um, really is quite helpful. Alright, we hit our evocations goal. So we're going to have more experience going towards transmutation. We're probably at about 40% success with Dragon Form. Let's just look, see how good we are. 45%. We're gonna need a lot more transmutation. I think we set our cap to 18. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna try and get the spell levels that we need by then and then we're just gonna try and keep unarmed combat going. Unarmed combat is really 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 good at a high skill level so there's this balance the entire game of giving unarmed combat experience even though it's not what's keeping you alive it's like a tax <laughs> if you don't pay your unarmed combat tax you'll be at the end of the game and you won't be able to one-shot things not that we're one-shotting deep elf knights but we might if we were in dragon form just saying So when you're fighting enemies that can use airstrike, one thing that you gotta realize is that if you're out in the middle of nowhere, the wind is gonna be stronger than if you're in an enclosed space. So make sure to get yourself to an enclosed space and neutralize the threat that they are presenting. Also, the wind drakes in particular do this wind blast which pushes you away and that has absolutely no effect on you if you're in a corridor. So we're doing pretty well on clearing uh, Elven Halls. Mana Viper is a great companion because basically everything in here will cast a spell. The air elementals can paralyze you now. It's not yet something that all electricity will do. Uh, it doesn't last very long, but you can still get paralyzed. So let's shut the door for now and let's just see how scary it is. Because if it's just an air elemental, we can take it. Yeah, no problem. I just don't really want to be paralyzed like this. We are in an awful position for the Deep Elf Zephyrmancer. The lightning bolt hit us, hit the wall behind us, and then hit us again. Zephyrmancer's out of here. Archer is not. And they're going to blink everywhere, so let's get into a more favorable position. Hey, we got a book. It's a book of storms. We don't have any air magic. I can say... I did have the fortune of using Stormform last game, and Stormform was indeed pretty powerful. It wasn't better than Dragonform, but I was also a Draconian. I 
wonder if we can get Summer Lightning Spire. We actually can. We don't have a whole lot of extra spell levels, and we don't have very many Scrolls of Amnesia, so I'm not going to. Situationally, that could be a really good spell. Viper, you're my bro. So we cleared everything except this uh, orange crystal statue and this dire flail of protection. There's nothing to Yara, as expected. We were able to kill it. We just we had a bad encounter with an animated weapon last character. So here we are, we finished Elf 2, our dragon form is not particularly close to castable, we're 41%, and our spell casting is getting slightly better as well. Um, I'm going to try and time it so that dragon form becomes castable at the same time that we have enough spell levels. I'm Honestly, though, I'm thinking I'll probably use um, a Scroll of Amnesia. Um, and maybe Ditch Spider Form. I don't like it a lot, but I can also get one level by forgetting Summon Small Mammal. Ugh. It'd probably have to be Spider Form. Anyway, we're going to keep spellcasting on, and we're going to keep fighting focused a little bit longer. Because it's so cheap, we may as well take advantage of it. Alright, so there's the Steel Barb Worm. There was a Book of Minor Magic, so we could get Blink. Very nice. We have our Condenser Vein back. So uh, we'll just kind of play as normal. Trying to make sure to not get in over our heads. I guess we already had Blink. Or is Blink not in the Book of Minor Magic anymore? That must be what it is. that paralyze. It's really nice to have a decent amount of hit points. I'm used to fighting most of the time as like a kobold. I have very, very few hit points. about that, especially because the scimitar flaming mean it'll wreck the ice beast. It's wrecking us because we weren't able to hit it with enough damage. They have such high armor class, that's why we need dragon form. Uh, so that's not good. We really didn't want to deal with that. But we can do it this way, kind of. Uh, I guess we could try and get more damage going to ice form, but that wasn't necessary at all. Plus seven dagger.
Yeah, so we're doing okay. As long as we're careful. And uh, someone commented on that. I think it was Satiric, but it might have been somebody else. I can't positively attribute it. They're saying that for them, as a transmuter, they find that they're dying because they're squishy. And transmuters are definitely squishy. I mean, you could go Chapriados, and then you'd be less squishy, because you could do heavy armor, but then you'd be playing a totally different character. I think playing Chapriados, it's just a totally different mindset. You can do it. Clearly, many, 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 many people have won. It's also extremely fun to have plus 15 to all your stats. But we're not, we're not playing Chabriados. In fact, we're playing a demigod, so we can't follow any deity. We shall have no god before ourselves. So, that did not work as expected. That air elemental is paralyzing our summons. We're running a little low on mana. The strategy is working well. to us, which they're not. Okay, that's no good. Let's go down these stairs. Where do these go? Alright, that's what we were hoping for. So we'll come up out of line of sight. And we'll pop in here. And to be honest with you, that's kind of scary. They can blink around, so a condenser vein probably isn't the best move. Although it's extremely tempting. It would be better if it was a little more of an enclosed area. We could still go down another staircase. So let's see if we can lure one of them to us, or if the arch is just gonna sit there. Okay. Well, we didn't find the third staircase. How did we not? Does Elf, oh, it's over here by the orange crystal statue. Well, let's give the terrain a little bit of a look. And then, if nothing else, that'll give some term, turns for the enemies to kind of wander away. So, are they going to be able to mesmerize us and have us... ...not be able to run? No. The shadow creatures will be bad, so we're, like, for sure going to get four bad things which will include a Zephyr Mancer, a Deep Elf Knight, yet we can't, we can't do this. I mean, it's not that we can't do it, it's that we're having to charge and kill a Zephyr Mancer, or a Orange Crystal Statue while we have Zephyr Mancers and who knows what else. And then as soon as we kill them, the statue is just going to summon more. Um, so that's a little dangerous. Let's go down this first staircase, the one in the more wide open area. And we picked up a Zephyr Mancer. We can probably do that again. Okay, not really. One more time? 
No. <laughs> Our reflection is actually almost killing these archers. They only reflect one per turn. But, yeah. Doing pretty well. So, our transmutation still needs several levels. There's no point in checking this. Fighting is now about the same as unarmed, and I believe we're stopping it at 14 anyhow. Yeah. And that's good. That gave us probably about five hit points a level. We should be in a better hallway for this. We should not have waited where we waited. Turns out it's okay, but we still should not have done that. This is why the Rope of the Vines is just so insanely good. Three and a half HP regen a turn. We need more dodging, that's what we need. Dex is high enough. Oh my god, you... These blinking things. We don't have any good spells to be able to... Good anything, really, to kill things at uh, range. So we're just gonna have to... Fall back. With another one of those dire flails. The deep arc... Deep Elf Archer's back. Let's keep running away to the stairs. Hide behind our summons. Get a little range. Alright. So that worked out well. And because of our rope, we basically are at full HP still. Glaive of Freezing, Archer and Zephyrmancer, pretty standard lowdown. I don't think any of them saw us. Okay, well they did now, and they're going to start chasing us. Thank you, Ice Beast. You're a real lifesaver. You're a nice pal. As much as we want to kill this archer right now, there's really no point. Alright, go Mana Viper. Go Ice Beast. Okay, we just... We just need to keep running. That archer does like way too much damage up close. Go for it. Now's the time of reckoning. I don't believe they're immune to cold, are they? They're very resistant, so they'll only take 25% damage. Either way, I'm still gonna. I don't think we can charm them. We can Ice Blast them. That didn't do much. Alright, Irradiate it is. That worked out well. We did end up taking some damage. But our summons are taking care of this last. Dope, oh, never mind. Yeah, we definitely need some more dodging. It's kind of expensive, but let's just turn it on for one level, and let's just remember 
there were 18 evasion. And if it goes up to 19, then we made a smart move. I should have just irradiated instead of trying to melee this trident. Okay, so orc sorcerers sometimes have the ability to banish you. Um, this one in particular doesn't. So they can still do bad things to us, but a little less concerned. Where did it go? Oh, orc sorcerer, where did you go? There you go. Okay, that's a scary vault. My oh my, two blade masters and a moth of wrath. Four blade masters and a moth of wrath. That is a death trap, and the only thing that's there is a book of necromancy and some gold. At least that's all that I can see. Could be that the Blade Master has picked up some of the loot. If so, it doesn't really matter to us. Vampiric Rapiers, Purple Rapiers, and Six String War Axe. Was a Gargoyle Earth Elementalist Sif Muna, a Geomancer. Yeah, I don't really want to fight any of those. There's not really any reward for it either. Probably the rest of Elf is going to be blocked off. And it's going to be the Hall of Blades. And that leaves us only to the final level of the Elven Halls. And our transmutation has not gotten anywhere close to where we were hoping it would be. But that's okay, because we got a little more UC. We got a little more fighting. That's at a discount. And, um... Let's hold off on dodging a little bit. Let's wait until we've got a little more experience. All right, Elf 3, benign. If we open the door, what bad things will happen? Okay, there's an air elemental. There's a water elemental. What about down here? Looks like a cool little entrance area. Got ourselves a potion of resist. That's a nice one to pick up. Especially since we don't have good resist. Hmm. This rock wall looks awfully suspicious. Polymorph, if our Evo isn't probably high enough to get a success unless we use vulnerability. The Polymorph could be useful um, to fight against enemies with weapons that we don't really want to deal with. Oh shit, I thought that was a locked door. Nope. Alright, well, I 
guess that means we're gonna get that gold man. I wonder why it was locked. Because it wasn't. Let's lure this down. We'll just radiate it. And take two hits. Not bad. We'll close that door. Wait for the deep elf knight to come around the corner. Kudaga Arter, Altar. We got an upstair. And through this translucent rock wall, we spot a Book of Winter. We don't need those spells. We don't have the spell levels for them anyhow. We do have artifact chainmail. So, it looks like probably we don't have anything super scary yet. Take that back. That's pretty scary. It's just a lot of enemies. That's just the only thing that makes it scary. So let's go around line of sight. Let the Mana Viper be there as long as they can, I guess. Lance of Force. So that, those fungus, those fungi were pretty cool. I've been thinking about what it might be like to play as a Fados character. It was a Fedas Magish. Fedas Madash. Fedas Madash, the god of plant and fungal life. I think it'd be fun to play uh, a ranged character. Arcane Missile, what do they used to call them? Arcane Marksman. This room is probably a lot safer now. Hey, Magic Scroll, Emporium. We got ourselves Fear. We'll just put the teleportation on our shopping list. Same with the magic mapping, because we don't yet need it. We have several of those. And I hope to be in a situation that I don't have to teleport 13 times in a row. I mean, so does everybody. But I'd rather save the goal just in case. So we now have metabolic and glaciation. Again, doesn't really make a difference to us because we need our spell levels to all go towards dragon form, which is now at 30%. Very nice. All right, a lot of 
war axe of venom. Don't really want to deal with that. Gonna have to though. But we'll do it from up here. Okay, uh, but we'll do it from up here. We did get ourselves poisoned, but we're no longer contaminated from irradiate. The fact that irradiate always hits is probably the best part about it. I think that's it's a tough spell to balance. You may wonder why we're not just chasing spell power on a radiate. Um, and that would be a good question. We are still picking up transmutation, so we're kind of doing it. Whoa. All right. We have found the end of Elf, so let's go ahead and exclude that area and get the rest. Salamander and a Vorpal Lorax that have both decided to chase us. Oh, and that salamander was actually a shifter. Paralysis gaze, not affected by line of fire. Interesting. All right, well, let's radiate to shining eye. Fuck it, let's just radiate. We're contaminated with residual magic. Oh, we got yellow contam. Do we have any cancellation? We do. The contamination could be nothing. So, the mutations are one in five, random, otherwise bad. That doesn't tell anything about the percentage of getting contaminated or getting mutated. So if you have yellow contamination, this is from the third entry in the Learn DB. So there is, so the contamination is an integer, and if it's yellow, it's at least 5,000. So if it's yellow contamination, best case scenario, you have um, 5 twelfths chance. So roughly 40% or so and, uh, of getting a mutation. So, and it might be worse. It might be 50-50. And if you get a mutation, four out of five times, it'll be bad. One out of five times, it'll be random, which could also be bad. Um, so one mutation, one bad mutation is not really something that we want. A cancellation is cheaper than a potion of mutation. If it was just a chance of getting a mutation, then I'd say let's just write it out. But since it was a chance of specifically getting a bad one, we'll use the cancellation. I think the shining eye, one of the things that it did was actually contaminate. Yeah, they, I mean, they could have cast Malmutate, I suppose. We didn't, we didn't get a mutation. Whoa, the plus five scythe finisher. It has Eviscerate and its speed. It's not something we're gonna use, but. Eviscerate. What does the Learn TV say about Eviscerate? So, at best, it has a 1 in 4 chance of insta-kill. <laughs> it's affected by the, um, the hit dice of a, of a monster. There's a list on GitHub that um, 
that shows it. So you're probably not going to insta-kill anything big, but you might. Okay, so this must be the earth vault that we said looked a little suspicious. So we got Zephyrmancers, Pyromancers, pretty normal. A Deep Elf High Priest, now that's bad. Call Down Damnation, Smiting, that's Aura of Brilliance. May, yeah, it buffs the casters nearby, and they also have Malign Offering. So... They're basically what I would want to play. <laughs> if I were playing one of these elves, I'd want to be the high priest. And I could buff everybody and heal them. Keep them surviving. Um, they don't have any summons though. The call down damnation, we can avoid that if we are adjacent to them. I think our best move is to run away. And we'll run away so hard that we'll shut the door. <laughs> uh, what is our escape path? There's no escape path down there. That could have been a death trap. So let's make sure we know what our escape path is. And then we can think about possibly, possibly fighting. It's a very long escape path. Got the Zephyrmancers down. Nice. There's a Pyromancer. We cannot close that door, that one's broken. There's our High Priest. Send the Mana Viper out. We'll break line of sight. We'll get our Mana Viper going. And we attack. Scroll of Fog, nice. This is a cool little ball. All these fiery columns. It's a steam generator. So surprisingly, we've been doing moderately okay. I attribute a lot of that to the Mana Viper. And we have totally explored Elven Falls, uh, with exception of Elf 3. So that was a good rough, roughly hour or so. We're gonna take ourselves a short break. And when we come back, um, when we come back, we're going to be going to the snake pits. So let's go ahead and get to the snake pits, just so we know what exactly we're doing when we get there. Um, what was stopping us before in the snake pits is we had a Sterion, and we were really close to getting Yara's Violent Unraveling. So now we can safely encounter them. We still don't have Resist Poison, um, 
but we should be able to handle things in Snake. If it if we do manage to get a rune, well, let's just see how it goes, because you never really know how it goes. We could go down there and, and find something even worse than Asterion and decide that we need to bail. Or maybe we fight Asterion and we decide we need to bail. Um, hopefully we don't get in too many near-death situations, but I have a feeling we will, because uh, these are branch ends and we've been kind of avoiding those for a long time. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next segment.